In this session, we are going to look into handling exceptions in multi-threaded environment. In multi-threaded environment, each thread has its own stack. So each thread must handle its own exceptions. If any of the threads doesn't handle exception, the entire program will be terminated. Let's look into that. Here we are creating this thread th and we are passing reference to perform work function and we are starting that thread and then we are just waiting for the keyboard input and we are returning. L let's not look into the rest of the program here. We are just returning from here. So we just want to start with basics. Let's look into this perform work function. What this does is it takes integer i and assigns it a value of 0. Integer j, j is 0 and integer k is i divided by j. So obviously 0 divided by 0 will cause an exception divide by 0 exception. So this will raise an exception and let's see what happens when the exception happens in that thread and which we are not handling anywhere. So let's build this program and let's run it. And you see that it threw an exception and the program terminated as expected. So obviously you might think that we need to handle an exception. So let's try to handle an exception here. So we put this try around uh, the thread where we are calling perform work and then we catch it and we display this message and let's build this now and run it. Still there is no improvement. We got exactly same behavior, exactly same exception and the program terminated exactly as before because the exception being thrown by perform work function is not reaching here because this part of the code is executing in the main thread and the perform work is executing in a separate thread and that thread has to handle its own exceptions. This exception handling is not going to help here. So let's go to that, that function. Okay, and in this function, we need to put exception handling. So we are putting this, uh, these statements which cause divide by zero exception in the try and catch block and we are catching exception here and we are saying exception caught in thread in which it occurred. That's a message we are displaying. So let's go back, uh, let's, let's put this line console read line here so that the program waits and let's build it now and re let's run it. So this time we got this message exception caught in thread in which it, it occurred and the exception is attempted to divide by zero. So this is the exception that was caught here by and we displayed this statement here and this was the part which displayed the type of exception which is divide by I mean the details of the exception which is divide by zero error occurred. So that's excellent. Let's get rid of this and let's move to next block. So now I want to show you technique by which the exception that occurred in a separate thread can be marshaled into the thread which is calling that thread. So the way to do it is we have to create this our own thread class called my thread. This technique is similar to returning value technique that you saw in our last session. So here this my thread will return and will marshal an exception rather than marshaling a return value and I will show you in a minute how to do that. So here we are creating this my thread and we are starting it and we are trying to catch it here. So we are, we, are, we are getting the results and we are catching the exception if any occurred and we are, we are displaying message caught an exception in calling thread created with my thread. So let's go and look in this my thread now. So what this my thread is doing is it has a result variable and then it has an ex exception return variable, the variable called ex, ex return. This is the variable in which we are going to return the exception to the main thread and we are creating a you know we have a thread variable and uh, on start 
we are creating this thread and we are starting it just like we did in the last session. Now in this session, uh, just like last session, we have this result property. When So when the calling thread tries to access the result, we first wait for the uh, thread performing work to complete by calling this join. And then we are going to check an exception, uh, ex return value. If it is not null, that means exception happened. And then we are going to throw the exception again. So this, this throw will execute on the calling thread and it will throw an exception on the calling thread. So if you look at the perform work function, what it is doing is it's doing this divided by zero operation and it's, ca it's catching exception. It's displaying this message caught exception in the thread in which it occurred. And then it is not throwing it. It is storing the exception in the local ex return ex variable of type exception. So it is storing it just like it, it was storing results in the last session. It's storing the exception so that so that it can be rethrown on the calling thread. So let's let's build this program now. And let's execute it. Uh, before we execute it, let's put console read line here and return. And let's now build it and execute it. So ignore the first one, which was uh, from the um, code we learned before. So look at the second one, exception caught in the thread in which occurred attempted to divide by zero. This is thrown by our perform work in our my thread class. So it's, it's coming from here. Now the next line, Caught exception in the calling thread created with my thread attempted to divide by zero. This exception is coming from here. So we are successful in catching, in throwing the exception from the thread we created and catching it in the thread from which we launched the new thread. So this is called exception marshalling. Now if you use task class, you don't have to do that exception marshalling. .NET already does it for us. So here, using the task class, I am calling this perform work return function, which is similar to perform work. It does the divide by zero thing, except that it has a return value. And we are throwing an exception. We are catching it, just printing a message out and throwing it again. And we this time we are not storing it anywhere uh, for us to be mar um, for us to marshal it. Uh, that marshalling will be done by .NET for us by this task class. So we want to verify that. So let's put console dot read line here and return and let's build it and let's run it. need to close our program. So let's build it and let's run it. So look at the last three lines. Exception caught in the thread in which occurred, attempted to divide by zero. This obviously came from here. This was that message, this message. The next message caught exception in the calling thread created with task, one or more error errors occurred. So this came from from here. And then the error here was one or more errors occurred because that message was put in the exception by .NET. To access the real error, you have to access the inner exception. So it puts the original exception in the inner exception object and inner exception message is attempted to divide by zero. That is exactly what happened. So that's great. .NET is doing the marshalling work for us. Now, same thing will happen if you use the func delegate. 
and you launch a thread using func. So we are here initializing func delegate to perform work and then we are calling this begin invoke and end invoke. So this end invoke does the marshalling for us and this exception will be caught here. So let's put console read line here. and return and let's just build it and let's run it oh let's close it now if you see here exception caught in the thread in which it occurred attempted to divide by zero a caught exception in calling thread created with func attempted to divide by zero. So that is the message which was displayed by this line here. So we were successful in catching the exception here in the main thread. Now in the next block we are using again func delegate but we are calling we are using asynchronous pattern so we are calling begin invoke and we are passing it the callback function instead of calling end invoke right after begin invoke so we are calling the callback function done and in that callback function we'll catch an exception so so this end invoke here in the callback function will rethrow the exception and which will be caught here and we are also putting the exception handler around this call caught exception in the calling thread this should not this will not get executed but because the exception will not reach here and we'll just build it and confirm this thing we made the same mistake again we need to close this program first let's build it and let's run it So if you look at this last line, exception caught in the thread in which occurred, that is what was throw, thrown by that, that function uh, perform work return. And then it says caught exception in the callback attempted to divide by zero. So this came from the callback, which is the done function here. This function done. So caught exception in callback that's a message caught exception in callback and then rest of it is attempted to divide by zero that came from here and then after that no message was displayed so that means this never executed so that means the exception never reached here so these are various techniques of handling the exception in the multi-threaded environment